2023 elections may be three years away, but zoning is still the name of the game as the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rafai, states that the 2023 presidency should go to southern Nigeria. And as Edo State 2020 polls draw closer, security operatives are concerned about the tension in the air. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Erufai, has expressed his opinion concerning what part of Nigeria should rule Nigeria come 2023. He stated that the 2023 presidency should go to Nigeria's southern region, saying this will promote the democratic tenets and balance of power among the regions of the country. Now, previously, Ibrahim Babangida, a former military head of state, expressed a similar thought, stating that the Igbos, in particular, should take the presidency in 2023. And joining me this evening to discuss this are two erudite personalities, one a political analyst by the name Jubike Oshodi. Thank you, Jubike Oshodi, for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. And also I have a journalist with me in the house this evening, Dipo Olayoku. Thank you, Dipo, for joining yeah, us this evening. Been a good evening. Now, you I just want to ask, ask, yes, thanks for joining us. Why do you think this call is becoming more louder, given the times we're in? Dipo, let me start with you. You know, when politics is in the air, and uh, you never can predict politicians. But it was the former national chairman of the defunct New Nigeria, uh, sorry, National Party of Nigeria, late uh, Augustus Meredith Adesaki Nloye, yes. who said, a politician, what is sought? We start preparation for the next election immediately after an election. So that's exactly what we are seeing. Because in your preamble, you said about three and a half years to 2023, the issue of elections are coming up. Yes. And um, elections in Nigeria is like a marathon. It's only that person that has that long breath that can breast the tape, so to speak. Um, it is not something you start six months to election. And it is not something you start Twelve months to election, and uh, in politics, twenty-four hours is like an eternity. I will not be surprised if, as twenty twenty-three draws close, those who are singing the tune of taking the twenty twenty-three to a one part of the country yes. will not tell you that it will be taken to another part of the country. That is politics, and it is because if you look at the discussion. For in the past uh, six months, it has been who takes the next presidency, and the contest has begun. So whatever we see on air is like flying a kite. And until we get to 2023, nobody can say categorically or specifically that this is where the pendulum will swing. But now let us look at narratives that are being pushed forward. Some people believe a section of the country has not had a shot at the presidency, yes. actually under a democratic uh, system of governance. And some people will tell you that, oh yes, if you are talking about uh, zoning, zoning should be between north and south. And some people will tell you, no, it's only when it gets to south, it should be to this area, it should be to that area. But I think what matters most is Presidency is not served a la carte, like they say in the many world. You struggle for it. You, you, okay, let me use the word, you work for it. It doesn't okay. come to you on a platter of gold. Okay, but we'll come to the issue of zoning in just a bit. But let, let, me, take, let me take MGBK's own <coughs> thought on this. It's not so much about the, the preparation for 2023, but there seems to be a predisposition about you know, zoning it to, to the south and to, to the eastern end. Why do you think this is becoming so much of a call these days? Because um, there's so many things why zoning is so important in Nigeria. For instance, we have a federal system of government, but if you look at it, is yes. it really federalism? So it, it's very important for people to see that their brother, their uncle, person from their political, geopolitical zone is there because there's an area of unfairness yes. in the federal structure. So obviously the Igbos haven't had it and the Yoruba, so many people feel um, 
they feel distorted, they don't feel they're part of the federal system. So that is why zoning is important. Okay, but now in, in the context of all being a, a federation, how how advantageous would you say zoning has, has been in our has played in our democracy? Because it's not so much about who the person is, it's so much about the merit of who the person um, that's going to be the president should be. But there's so much emphasis on the zoning system that yeah. has not benefited a, a certain geopolitical zone. Now, let, let's begin to enumerate the, the pros, the advantages, and the disadvantages of zoning so far as it has affected us as a people. And I'll go with you, Digmo. Yes, if you're talking about zoning and then some people be transient. Uh, if you look at, uh, that's why we need to set ourselves to political dispensation. We are not going to take into consideration the age of military or dictatorship. Yes. We are talking about presidency. If you look at the history of Nigeria, for today, though it is not in the constitution, we have six geopolitical zones, so to speak, that people are flowing with. And if you look at the, the spread in Nigeria, there's a, there's a geopolitical zone in the north that has not even produced it, never produced the president, the president, yeah. and that is the north central. They are also laying claim to it. That's why I said by the time we get to 2023, we will know how much effort you have put in pushing your agenda. The north central people are also saying, yes, we have never had it. And in the south, that's why I said there is this contention when you're talking about zoning. Yeah. Is this zoning on the basis of north and south or zoning on the basis of geopolitical zone? It is the one that applies to you that you grab. For example, you go to states. We have the problem of zoning too. We have three geopolitical zones in almost all the states. I remember in 2019, there was this idea of there are some areas that have never produced the governor. Then what do we have? Eventually, at the end of the day, it is the voting strength that determines who gets what. Let me give an example of the Bauchi state. Okay. I played a very prominent role in Bauchi politics in that last 20, in 2019 election. But there's the Bauchi Center that comprises Bauchi, the metropolis, that have always produced the governor of the state since its beginning. Some two political parties wanted to toy with their idea of shifting the governorship seat to the other two uh, senatorial students. But when they look at the voting stress, they quickly beat a retreat and come back to the Bauchi stone. So the same thing is going to happen at national level. Voting, the election is about voting. It is not about sentiment. It's about what you put into it to get it. Yeah. There's no sympathy in politics. It is what you bring to the table that will play out. That's why I said 2023 is still very far in terms of election. But you never can tell what is going to happen that we get, we get there. But as far as the election is concerned, there's no sentiment in politics because politicians are very mean. Okay, Jimmy, I'm going to throw this at you because he said something when I was speaking, um, zoning based on geopolitical zones. Um, th this has not fair way for us as, as a federation. And do you think we should continue with this zoning system? And should it be based on geopolitical zones or based on merit? If beyond 2023, the, the man fitter for the job seems to come from the north, should that be in contention? To be honest, yeah. zoning is one of the things that has ruined our our um, politics as a nation. Yeah. For instance, we give posts to people based on their geopolitical zone so, so. in the state, in the local government, at federal level, despite whether they have merit, despite whether they have character, yes. and that has actually made Nigeria quite a poor country. I don't think we should go on with zoning, but it goes back to the issue of federalism. If, we, each, each, if each region doesn't feel they're part of the federation, they'll want their people there. Because once their people are there, all the federal appointments then go to them. So it's an issue we need to sit on a round table and know how we're going to move forward. Otherwise, we, they say if you keep on doing the same thing, you get the same results. Mm. How justifiable would you, would you think this would be if come 2023, the, the North retains the power and, and the president seems still comes from the north. How justifiable would that be? Well, it, it depends on when the politics of the season. That's why I said in politics, there's no sentiment. Politics is raw game. What you bring to the table is what you get back. It is just unfortunate that the system of uh, the process that threw up. So our let me cut your thought quickly. Okay. Are, are you for zoning based on geopolitical zones okay. or for based on merits? That's what I'm saying. I was okay. just. It is, it is very very unfortunate that the system or that the process that produces our leaders is faulty. 
if you travel extensively across Nigeria, there's no part of Nigeria that is not blessed with materials, both human and other natural resources, yes. material resources. But unfortunately, the, I don't want to use the word character because people will see it from the negative perspective. The, individu the, the individuals that our process throws up is not based on merit. How do I mean? If you look at 2019 election, if you're talking about merit, people will be looking at, oh, he's a technocrat. The direction will move quickly towards uh, Kingsley Mogalu, if you listen to him and stuff like that. But because of the system that we have, our system will not produce a Kingsley Mogalu as a present candidate. Like, there was a joke about um, 12, 13 years ago, that if Obama were to be a Nigerian, he would never have emerged as a candidate of a political party. That is because in Nigeria, politics is like a business. And you have the merchandise absolutely in control. Because of the type of politics we play, it involves a lot of money. And in other lands, in other clients, the average person contributes to the emergence and the sustenance of a candidate. But here, very few people that have a very deep watches are the one in charge that produce the candidates. And if you look at across the Nigeria, you will see it there. And when they get there, because they use their money to get you into office, what comes to them first is how do we recoup our money. But if you have been a product of an average Nigerian, we are that Yasikira that is selling palm, uh, palm, palm wine or palm oil, and the Babashaki that is selling uh, meat, was involved in your emergence yes. and sustaining you. It will be difficult for one so-called go-father to hijack you, so that when you get there, you will forget the masses that you are supposed to serve. So it is rather the system that is faulty. If we have a perfect system and we say we are zoning this thing even to the remotest parts of the north, you will get somebody that is capable, both mentally, physically, and, and otherwise, just to make sure. But unfortunately, the system that we produce, that produces this candidate, is very faulty and it will, it, will, it will rub off negatively on the candidate that we emerge. Yeah, qu qualitative representation is what Nigerians need when it comes to leadership and governance. And so far, the, the ballot is an only means to, to choose to elect this qualitative um, um, representation. So far, we, we see an inadequacy in, in good governance and leadership. How do we begin to address all of these issues before 2023, Jibike? I think it's important that all Nigerians realize that we all have a stake in Nigeria. Okay. Because regardless of the people that determine politics, I'm sure the electorate is more than them. But we find Nigerians are very docile in complaining, very docile and even, even in voting. So I think we should begin to know that Nigeria is at stake and we're at stake. So more people should even join political parties in the en masse and demand qualitative representative because until we have that, we can't move ahead, unfortunately. Now, now um, Dukpo, there's been several calls for the Electoral Act to be reformed. And do you think when this is finally done, do you see that solving the, the great issue we're facing with our electoral process as it is? And if not, then what, what are our alternatives? Uh, who will operate the electoral reforms? Are they not Nigerians? It, 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 yes, we have issues because they said the only thing that is constant is change. Yes, yes. There's need for us to toy or take with our processes. But if you still have the same dramatic personnel driving the process, it will still bring about the same thing. But to, to, to some of us, it is not really the system that is at fault or that is faulty. Let me give you an example. There was a time we had a Dora Akunyilu in the NAVDAC. And within that time, the lady, woman was there we saw changes. Yes. Now that came alive, and we saw it. After her departure, she was posted to another area. And at times, some people don't even know that we still have a NAVDAC that is in existence today. So rather, I think it is the individual to some extent. The system could be there. And I, I want to use an example. If you go to the Niger Delta area, we have six states, Delta, Imo, sorry, Delta, Akwaibo, Uyo, and stuff like that. There was, they were collect, they, all of them were collecting derivation, 13%. But about seven, eight years ago, nine years ago, 
there was a man they call Akpabio. If you travel to uh, Akwaibom that time, you will then be asking yourself, are these people not collecting the same 13% derivation as the people in Delta? I'm not trying to bring any governor down. So it, at times you see some stars will just shine as an individual. And then you look at what is that person? So even if you bring about the so-called uh, electoral reform and that uh, people are talking about, okay, let us be using electronics form of the, uh, dissemin disseminating election results, are we not going to put Nigerians there? So I, I think, that, like some of us, our belief, our problem, I believe our problem has to do with what we really need more than anything is attitudinal restructuring of our minds. If you have not restructured the mind of an average Nigerian that you will put in there, in 2003, the election that produced uh, the former governor of uh, Anambra State, uh, um, Peter Obi, Peter Obi. You know, in the first ballot, he lost until he went to court, to the tribunal to retrieve his mandate. We were working, I was working with a television station. We were, we were some guys, our guys were feeding us with information from the field. And they were telling us how the authentic high neck ballot boxes were being discovered in the forest while some people were bringing fake ballot boxes to polling centers. A guy was telling us, he was just this ad hoc stuff, he was telling the colleague that on the day of election, I'm talking of 2003, he came back home with about 4 million naira. Mm. Just somebody appointed as an ad hoc sack of a neck. So as long as you see these Nigerians' position that have not changed their mind, whatever electoral reform you bring will be circumspect. They, they find a way of uh, making it not to work. When we initially, when they started, I think it was Professor Morris Iwu, who told us that by the time, no, it was Jerry Ghana, sorry, Jerry, Jerry Garada, that the moment they introduced um, this electronic uh, registration, yes. with smart card, that we will have been able to eliminate over 14. Can we be able to do that? Okay. That is Nigeria for you until we are, reform our minds. No amount of electoral reform will be, give us the charge result. Okay, now let, let's, take, let's take a holistic look at the entire zoning process system of um, the, the six geopolitical zones and also the federal character comes to play, the quota system comes to play. Do you think this has in any way made a certain um, part of, um, of the country, the geopolitical zone, feel entitled and more privileged than others? Jibike, your, your thoughts on this? Yes, it has, okay. because if you look at the years in which Nigeria has been in existence, a certain political zone have ruled for more than half of those years. But also it goes back to the issue of elections. They probably have more electoral boots. Mm -hmm. The whole system has been designed in a way to favor a certain geopolitical zone. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to go back to the drawing board and really have a new census, new um, demarcation of local governments before we can move ahead. Also, also, as I said before, if you do the same thing, you get the same result. Also, the quota system has been embedded in the ministries, everywhere in the federal civil service. That also favors them as well. Now, um, El Rufai clearly said he thinks that the presidency should be zoned to the south come 2023, and um, former head of state Babangida did say <laughs> it should be given to the, to the easterners. Now, do you think in all of these statements, do you, do you think there are other comments that we're not paying attention to? I, when a Nigerian politician speaks, you have to look at where he's coming from. Because Nigerian politician speaks from the point of political interest. That one is basic. And once the interest changes color, you see him saying another thing. 2023 is still very far. Don't forget about before, immediately after the election, we even saw what looks like a poster of Rufai as a presidential candidate. After that, he came to Lagos to drop us some people believed to be a bombshell. And it, dramatically, Rufai is now talking about the presidency shifting to the south. There must be a case of interest there. But now to the reality, like my sister just said, politics is a game of number. And that is this number that has been used or exploited by some people from a geopolitical zone to actually do what some people look like dominating the political terrain. But they have their own argument. That since 1999, to them, if we are looking at the northern part of the country, yes. that the south 
has, has, has rolled, rolled, rolled more yes. than the not. Then how do we, if they bring, bring it to the table, then how do we fault it? Mm -hmm. But I think what is very, very important is where institutions like this, like the, the former American president did, what he did was to Dr. Donald Reagan. What he did was Ronald Reagan. Ronald the Reagan. other, the current one is Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. the, I think he was, just the, he was uh, Ronald Reagan was to develop a new generation of voters. Let me tell you one thing. For our, we have APC, PDP, just like we have the Republicans, Democrats in America. There are some families or individuals that come rain, come sunshine, they always vote for this political party. Yeah. It's like a tradition, just like football club. Some people were born into Liverpool, they will continue to be Liverpool, Liverpool. So that APC, PDP demarcation will still be there. I think what Nigerian should do is to develop a different, a new culture, generation of voters. And then there's the need for us to show more interest in politics. If one travels to the north in doing the time of electioneering, those people take politics as a serious business. Even these so-called illiterates, who doesn't know what is going to eat in the next one hour, when he is in a political atmosphere, you will see him fully charged. On the day of election, this bull will go to the polling booth, not mighty distress. But here, some guys who come, because you know they always restrict movement, some able bodied boys that should have gone to the polling booth to vote will be playing, convert our road to football pitch. They will be playing football. Okay. Now, we're running out of time. I want us quickly talk on rotational presidency. Do you think this should be done away with? And what should it now be based on, upon? If we're looking away from um, the, the zoning, the zoning system of the six geopolitical zones, presidency. Presidency. Yeah, you see, all, all politics is local, mm. and that is why we have to look at the peculiar nature of the Our country. Politics. We have so many biases, religious, ethnicity, social class. That is where the issue of zoning, original by original presidency was introduced in the first instance. If not, there was no need for it. Yeah. But my, my prayer is, even if we are going to do zoning, or we are going to do regional presidency, any, wherever the thing is zoned to, let them give us the best materials there. OK, great. I think that's just okay. what I want to say. this is it. Um, some, some northern elites and political stalwarts have said they were shortchanged when um, Yaroda yeah. died and um, good luck at Bella, Jonathan, took over, that they, they, they still feel their terms um, they were shortchanged with a term. How, how do you see this panning out come 2023? Now, some, some northern politicians are saying, let's zone it to the south. And some northern elites and political stores are saying, you know what, we were shortchanged. We still need, we still want to retain power. What, what do you see happening here come 2023? I see happening because, as he said, my brother said here, the northerners are more political astute than what we do. We'll find that come 2020, they'll probably be more united. 2023. 2023. Yeah. They'll be more united to get a common candidate from their northern area to suit them because they know that politics is a business. In the South, I think we think we don't relate politics with business. We think once we are okay, where everybody, once our family is okay, but they realize that it's important that they retain power. And as he said, they might actually bound together to get the Northerners in again. All right, JB Kell Show, the political analyst. Thank you very much for your contribution in this segment. And also journalist, Dipo Olayoku. Thank you for your contribution in this segment. Thank and thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the violence in Edo State is giving security a cause for concern. Do stay with us. <laughs>